Recently, the Supreme Court in a 5-4 decision ruled in the case of Albert Florence. Albert Florence in 2005 was driving with his then pregnant wife uh, to a Sunday dinner. Their four-year-old child was in the back seat. The car got pulled over and the, co the cop that pulled him over decided to check everybody's ID. Well, Florence, as I said, Albert Florence was in the passenger seat and they checked his ID and lo and behold, uh, supposedly he had an unpaid traffic fine. They immediately arrested Albert Florence and took him to jail where he underwent two separate strip searches and spent six days in jail. Come to find out it was a clerical mistake. He had actually paid the fine. Well, the Supreme Court, in what I consider a devastating decision, upheld this strip search saying that for the security of so-called jailers and it wouldn't be workable to do anything else, um, what they needed to do was allow jailers, this is the Supreme Court of the United States, any jailers for any offense to strip search people who are arrested. Fortunately, there were four judges that disagreed with this particular decision. Three of them females and one Justice Breyer who wrote the dissent had this to say about strip searches. Justice Breyer said a strip search involves a visual inspection of the inmate's naked body. This should include the inmate opening his mouth and moving his tongue up and down from side to side, removing any dentures, running his hands through his hair, allowing his ears to be visually examined, lifting his arms to expose his armpits, lifting his feet to examine the sole, spreading and or lifting his testicles to expose the area behind them, and bending over and or spreading the cheeks of his buttocks to expose his anus. For females, the procedures are similar, except females must, in addition, squat to expose the vagina. Amazingly, uh, Justice Kennedy, who wrote the decision allowing these strip searches, said that it wouldn't be workable to do anything else but allow these uh, massive strip searches. But the key here is our Constitution. The Bill of Rights says that it must be made workable. We must conform what we do, the police, the jailers, to the Constitution. Our Fourth Amendment gives us the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures unless there is clear evidence we're doing something wrong. Another thing that this case does, it reverses the burden of proof. When you go to jail, let's say you're arrested for driving with, uh, without a driver's license or you left your driver's license at home. When you're strip searched, male or female, what it says is that we, they presume you guilty before you uh, are proven innocent. In other words, uh, we're all criminals now in a surveillance state. It is clear now that what we're dealing with is an elitist body of men uh, who run the Supreme Court, the so-called law and order fashion, who will uphold basically any governmental decision. Mind you, it's the same Supreme Court which ruled last summer uh, in 2011, in the case of Kentucky versus King, that if the per police arrive at your door and it's the wrong door, they might smell marijuana, they don't need a warrant, they can blast down your door, come in and arrest you. What we're seeing here is the complete decimation of our Fourth Amendment that again, uh, protects us against unreasonable searches and seizures without some kind of evidence that we're doing something wrong. Now the Supreme Court says they don't need a warrant to do most of the things that they do. So what, is, what, what are we saying here? Well, they've actually taken the Fourth Amendment, put it in a funeral box, and buried it in the ground. What we're dealing with here is a group of elitists that run Washington, D.C., from the President to the Congress to the Supreme Court. They'll never have their door battered down and police rushing in arresting them. Uh, they arrive at the Supreme Court in limousines and they're protected. They go to all the posh parties in Washington, D.C. So there are really two classes of Americans, the people who run this country, the elitists, and us, the average Americans. And if we step out of line, folks, we're going to be subject to the tactics of the police state.